So hello all and welcome to a new episode of AFSF Startups and let us put our hands together to welcome our special guest for today Mr Sandeep Kulkarni Mr hello. Sandeep is an alumnus from JJ School of Arts Mumbai and after an intense theater of 4 years in English Marathi and Hindi his career started to take shape in television He's played a variety of roles in different channels and Sandeep's career in film began with his first movie in Mamo back in 1994 which is directed by the legendary Sham Benegal. After acting in several other movies like Shwas in 2004 which is directed by Sandeep Sawan which also went for an Oscar nomination this put Sandeep's performance in the spotlight. after which he did a lot of hindi marathi films and also started his own production house so without further ado let us welcome the famous artist and who's also one of afsf's india advisory board members and the bollywood celebrity mr sandeep kulkarni welcome hi so uh, just to kick things off i'm curious to know after doing fine arts from jj school what made you shift to acting well uh, when i was doing my fine arts in jj i was completely kind of uh, focused on uh, uh, becoming a, becoming a painter and uh, going to paris wow. have a small <laughs> studio there and uh, almost like uh, live the rest of the life in paris because that's the place where uh, all isms evolved in paintings and you know all creative forms creative arts also but uh, i was then exposed to world cinema Uh, i was in a film club and we all group of painters were regularly attending this uh, film club and uh, uh, international festivals and film suddenly kind of became you know it started captivating me because i thought it was the strongest medium where all arts come together and the best you know arts i mean the, uh, the all the forms i mean the essence of all arts are been seen in a film you know one has to select whether it is music whether it is visual whether it is um, you know act uh, even acting actors mm. the imagery everything so it's it's a it's a culmination of all, all arts that's what i thought also i thought that without going to any country or without actually being there you can see the culture you can see the social status of a country when you see a german film when you see a iranian film mm-hmm. right so that becomes exchange of culture exchange of thoughts exchange of creative ideas through films so that's what fascinated that's why i you. thought that's what fascinated me and uh, then i started as an actor first because i met mr satyadev dubey who was a, a very good trainer at that point of time he was a brilliant coach and he was a tough master oh really so i <laughs> almost yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i almost spent 3 years like you know with him uh, dedicatedly doing theater uh, with in all these three languages so i would say he's my mentor uh, so whatever i am here now is because of him i would say uh, and obviously i was continuing my painting i was doing my advertising work i was doing my storyboards when i was doing theater but that was my uh, pocket money source also <laughs> and uh, also I had this uh, additional ability to visualize things when I was doing theater also. That's so, for every art uh, student as well, right? I mean, correct, you have to correct. have that visual ability, which correct, is strong. Correct, correct. Because it's a discipline. It's a it's a habit. It's a second habit that comes to you. Yes. So as an actor also, or when I was doing theater, I could visually appreciate, or I could visually, when we were reading a script, I could visualize the play. I could visualize the characters. So that was an additional thing that came to me when I. I uh, started doing my theater and uh, as I grew as an grew as an actor you know because uh, when the script was read to me I mm-hmm. could see the character I could visualize the character you know and uh, I could uh, then interact with the director how it will look because he had something in mind I had something in mind and finally we could quickly come to a point so there was hardly any time to kind of derive into the finalization of any character which I was doing we'd also like to know about your experience in one of your big films like in shwas and how it was an oscar nomination how was your reaction when you got to know about this and how did the yeah. industry react to it 
So when we were doing the film, we never thought that it will really kind of have this kind of a mileage because we were all very dedicated to make a good film and especially in Marathi because Marathi at that point of time was more into comedy films and more to the gallery types of films and all that. Okay. So this was a film where that my first film in Marathi because initially I had done all Hindi films with Sham Benegal, Govind Ehlani, mm-hmm. uh, Sudhir Mishra. And I've done Shul with Ram Gopal Verma Productions. I've done Traffic Signal also with Madhur. So Marathi was far away because I couldn't relate myself into Marathi films at that point of time. But when Shwas came as a script and when the director came, I was a little surprised, you know, that somebody is making this kind of film in Marathi. And the whole intention of making this good came into place where all everybody, the cinematographer, all the actors, and everybody was. aligned to make this film into a you know a good good film basically uh individually speaking for me it was a very difficult role because i was very young to play a established ankylologist at that point of time because it was based on a true story of uh, ankylologist called shailesh puntambekar he is now based in pune now he is a very renowned oncologist okay. but uh, i was supposed to be a very successful oncologist at that point and very i was very young at that point of time and uh, i could see that i had to work hard on uh, you know actually make it believable wow. so obviously i uh, started going to shailesh puntambakar's uh, clinics i attended his operations basically to observe and to understand how they operate Wow. how they deal with patients so even he used to wonder what am i doing here in the <laughs> clinic but <laughs> but i told him just just do your i mean just don't bother that i'm here you know just think that i don't exist i'm just here so it really absorbed the role the character little, how he yeah is. yeah so in those 15 minutes he used to deal with those patients he used to understand the patient's mind and you know give them something which will very hopeful so the patient used to walk out very hopefully Wow. And this is what I got and this is what I absorbed. So if you see Shwas, this is what I could recreate. Then that film gave me all the awards also that year, all the best actors awards of that. It won the national award also the film and then the the big thing was it was an official nomination for the Oscars. Wow, yeah. And, I know uh, the biggest suddenly thing. Suddenly the film was watched by everybody all Bollywood <laughs> people and everybody. So the biggest uh, compliment I got was when uh, Shabana Azmi saw, saw this film in I think Kerala festival and uh, she was very impressed and she uh, got my number from Urmila Matondkar and uh, she called me and she the first thing she asked me was which medical college are you from. <laughs> so <laughs> So I said no I'm not a medical student I am uh, from JJ I'm a visual arts student I'm from wow. JJ she could believe she said I also do all the homework and research and all things but how do you how do you look like a doc- I mean you look like a medical student so I said that was the biggest compliment I got uh, from But would you say it's, this it's, was your tough a tough role for you It was initially but then it flowed we had work on the script also so well the director has we had interacted so well so when it actually came to shoot we all flowed into the film you know what so in your opinion the, was a tough role though like apart from this uh many times uh, uh, i i mean i'm i'm doing the second biopic now uh, of mahatma phule i'm playing mahatma phule but initially wow. i played sane guruji also so playing a biopic is a very difficult role difficult in a sense because you are answerable to people because people judge you that are you you know right or are you believable or can you carry the whole film can you make the film believable or can you recreate the character alive on screen mm-hmm. because it's a period you have never seen that person you only kind of read and discuss with people whom maybe they were there when he was present that character was present and then with all your whatever skills and your visualizations and whatever you try to recreate it but if you fail because i still remember when i was because i had done dobili fast also dobili fast was again a very big hit and again it won the national award and that gave me wow. again a very uh, kind of a good mileage as a recognition and all that 
and then in fact when i was doing dongoli fast in the same year i was shooting sane guru ji now this it was 2005 2005 i was we shooting and both characters are reversed i mean dongoli fast was very aggressive when a man who is oppressed and who is now completely exploded throughout the film and you know and sane guru ji is a gandhi he is a Ma- gandhian of maharashtra who is a very soft who is a very gentle who is a very a vulnerable a teacher at the that point of time sure. and i was shooting simultaneously with both the but that wow. was my memorable year because you know i had to completely shift to one person and completely uh, shift to the other yes without uh, mixing them as well yeah yeah but i still remember that sane guru ji was the most difficult because as i said that person to recreate because don't believe really, as the character was not i mean it it was not live or nobody had seen it i had to make it live no i had recreated it i had created it but sane guru ji is somebody who has been there who have was a iconic figure in maharashtra and whatever some old people are still there who were his students when wow. sane guru ji was so i i still remember when the first screening happened i was you know sitting outside biting my nails and you know like <laughs> nervous if these people accept me then only i am you know succeeded otherwise my whole efforts it's like and a heavy luckily, weight on your shoulder yeah 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 absolutely i couldn't sleep the night yeah the day night uh, the previous night uh, before the first screening but after the screening these people guys came and they were very emotional they said we could uh, you know uh, you almost got this man alive on screen wow and that really kind of so biopic and especially when you know you uh, really want to do that person make that person alive recreate it that responsibility is too high big on your shoulders so right now i am doing again this i mean we have we are doing a film on mahatma phule uh, again wow again mahatma phule and his wife savitri bai were again iconic figures in i mean maharashtra and they were the first couple who got in education and <clears throat> you know uh, into especially women's education and women's reform into the and uh, again a very dynamic man dynamic person uh, so i'm really kind of i mean i would say it's excited and nervous thing but excited yeah. yeah but once you get those positive uh, uh, remarks you are on heaven you know in heaven i mean it's like you are you are really made you are really kind of kind of uh, i mean one of all actually wow yeah and i think uh, like all your experience in acting has also led you to start your own production house right so yes. why did you start your own production house wasn't acting it was an easy enough responsibility or a big enough <laughs> responsibility yeah so this this thing many a times comes to me why the hell i'm doing this and why <laughs> am i getting this you know burden on my but it all uh, happened very organically and naturally what happened was i was when i was doing a few films many a times the scripts were good but it didn't go get executed well mm-hmm. because uh, many a times certain capable people were not there on board you know whether it is the cameraman whether it is the director or whoever so sometimes you know because i generally i go in a film uh, on the script because the f- script is the first thing which you know is so the everything basic everything else is already set in place else, yeah but in the process if the capable people are not in place then it it is not culminated into good true sure. right so this is where i thought that no i should use my experience many few uh, producers or investors also were after me that why don't you use your experience because it will be like a trust factor for us that okay you know at least our money is uh, going into a good uh, place or you know it is actually getting really kind of uh, uh, aligned well so that is how we started that's how i started my first so i started with the line production i just started that let me do the line production like mm-hmm. you know not a full fledged producer or a production house but i started my proprietary production house called kathakar entertainment we did a couple of line production for a couple of films that's how i also got a hang of, a hang of uh, production you know because there's a there stages like pre production and post so one has to also understand and really get a hold on all the three phases to make a good film Absolutely. so once i caught that then we started our production house so now we have partners so we have so we made a, a first film was dombuli return which we made in 
17 uh, so we made a bilingual which is there on uh, hotstar now which is streaming on hotstar now really so lovely it's not a sequel yeah it's not a sequel of uh, don't believe fast but uh, it's again a a uh, story of a common man who is again placed in that suburb called Dobuli which is a very kind of a prominent suburb in Maharashtra so it's not a sequel but it's kind of a similar feel, feel into that film but a different story it's a psychological thriller And I think that's a good way to capture your audience. I mean, it's not always how big the yes. production is and how massive the correct, like, story correct. is, but it's how you impact, how the story will touch also, the audience. A... And I think as per production houses or anything in film as well, it keeps evolving, right? So what are your yes, views on the new era of digital market and film? Like, Do you see it as an yes. advantage so or now, a disadvantage? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, there are advantages and both disadvantages, but we still are kind of speculating of how it will go into the next era, you know, how it will continue because we're still in the COVID phase and after the COVID phase, see, it's all speculations, but uh, whatever the, so we all kind of gather the speculation with the experiences that we all have. Uh, one is, yes, because of the digital platforms, the mm -hmm. audience has become global. So, as I said, uh, Don't Will really Return now being on Hotstar, now even people, you know, all the whole country or even people outside can watch the film. So, you are suddenly the audience becomes global. And also, a film, good film, any good film, whether it is Don't Will really Return, any good content can stay for long on a digital platform. Otherwise, what happens in theatres if the audience are not full or if the audience don't come, they, mm -hmm. they take out the film in many, many, uh, maybe a week or not even mm. a week sometimes it's a harsh truth, and you don't huh? get to see a good film yeah wow. it's a harsh, harsh truth because that's the economics that's what that works but on digital it stays and you can watch it the biggest advantage is an audience can, uh, any viewer can watch it at his time right his whatever choose, chosen time so that's a big advantage uh, on digi digital platform but the biggest dis disadvantage for investors and producers is a film which gives you a chappar phadke or a bomb you know, sometimes in theatres which will never happen on digital because you will always have an upper cap because you are already sold or you are already given rights in on a certain price really? and that never. yeah and then the few films which are biggest hit like even my film like Don't Really Fast which ran for 27 weeks and you know at that point of time so that will never happen uh, or it might it, I mean we really don't know what will happen to the theater scene now, right? And uh, yes, but one thing is always there. I always believe that audiences had always been going into theater or going even into any amusement park for a certain kind of experience. And every individual wants a certain kind of experience and which is, which is why they want to, which is why they are ready to pay for it. True. So theater is always an experience which will never which will never happen in a in your home. However, you know you have a home theater or whatever. But the theater experience with a popcorn in the hand or you know with the <laughs> friends around and and the big screen and you know they were, so that will never happen at in your home. So I think after the COVID phase, people will definitely go in back. Now we're missing it. We're really missing it. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. So we spoke in length about your background in film and your own production house. Now shifting a little bit to AFSF, how has your association been with AFSF India and what would you want to tell people about joining the AFSF Salute India virtual event? AFSF has uh, basically, I could see the passion into it. So that's how I also joined it. And Rajvi, being my old friend, uh, obviously I was introduced to ASFS by Rajvi. But I could see a whole gang of passionate people joining in and uh, they have a very positive attitude, even this time, like what uh, Rajvi and the whole group is doing. Is uh, uh, See, all different uh, social groups and everybody is doing, uh, they're saluting the frontliners, saluting the people who have lost their lives in the whole thing but uh, obviously you can't be on all platforms but here the platform which I know which I'm convinced which I 
uh, have seen with my own eyes mm -hmm. is something which I definitely would love, uh, want to be a part of and you know uh, invite people to join this uh, event that is happening because they are truly kind of doing many uh, uh, things uh, distributing uh, PPE kits, distributing uh, food packets and maybe they are also working on the vaccines to you know reach many of people I mean yes. as num uh, many number of people and everything so they are all kind of doing it very uh, kind of passionately and uh, I am completely kind of uh, uh, with them you know whatever uh, their uh, thing so I think on the event I would definitely would like to walk in well, the event that's great yeah, because I've been yeah because uh, I have uh, been doing my power yogas and walks every day. Oh, lovely. Even, yeah, so in my campus, since you can't go out. But I'm doing it uh, dedicatedly. And I think in different forms, people should join in into different activities, uh, either into groups or do it alone. But one has to do it. I think. Lovely. And I think that's, that's so well said. And why not do it? as well as salute our frontline workers and do something healthy at the same time. And I think that we are hoping for an eventful and successful virtual event and with people like you cheering everyone on and being a part of it, we look forward to a wonderful celebration. And that's a lovely way to also end our crisp and brief and engaging talk. And we were so pleased to have you at the AFSF Startups and how much you motivated us and shared your inspirational journey. Thank you so much, Sandeep, for joining us as our special guest. It was an honor. Uh, my pleasure too. Thank you.